January 7th. So moved. Next. Discussion? Um, I had to take these because Councillor uh, <coughs> Adam begged me to. Uh, but I think uh, with my, what I, my notice is with the combination of PowerPoint and the uh, Further discussion? So I handed out a uh, hi. How are you tonight? Good. Um, they brought in a report of calendar year 2012, uh, basically a summary of permits. Um, first page is the listing of all the permits that, uh, all the Northampton permits that the building department gave out um, by type, building electrical, et cetera. Second page is a listing of all the new structures uh, broken down into commercial and single family. That's the permit uh, by say, work category? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that the $11 million in value? For new commercial buildings. Right? And then... Do any two families? So it's just single family, or yeah. four, four or more. Is that, is that Six single families. Okay. Okay. Last okay. year that we did, last year we didn't do anything but single family permits. We didn't do any townhouses. We didn't do any two families. And I'm sorry, just what's the limit for commercial? Commercial is four or more. Um, four units. I think it would be four or more. I think because I think we would have listed. I think we have single, two, and three families in townhouses. So no, in 2012, no single? No, no multi-families. Yeah, with less than four units in it. And this, you know, I mean, this is, this is, um, our reporting system isn't, isn't the greatest. I mean, we catch the totals for sure. Sometimes the divisions aren't. 100% because memory serves we did do a town one townhouse permit and I don't see it here but my memory also isn't what it might be the years tend to run together so um, site collections haven't been a problem say again site collections haven't been a problem no we don't hand out permits until we get the money <laughs> it's, 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 it's You'll never see an unpaid fee because we, we literally don't we don't even we won't even record the permit application until we have the money. Uh, and the last page is just a breakdown in the difference between commercial and residential building permits and uh, both in terms of the estimated value of the construction and numbers of permits. I'm sorry, I, I, I knew when I walked up here that I didn't have that. And I have last year's numbers, I just didn't pull them out. This past year was a good year. Um, it's as good as we've had since, um, and I'm trying to think of whatever year Ford Hall went in. But Ford Hall pushed the numbers way up. But other than that, this is as good of a calendar year as we've had for a long time. I think time. we saw those numbers in the night Right. Yeah, the new the new growth numbers are is the seventeen million. Yeah, see, I, I, we also I also break it differently. I brought calendar year here because I show up once a calendar year, and fiscal year numbers wouldn't be particularly relevant because they'd either be, you know, as of July July first, or you know, or halfway through this year. So I brought calendar year numbers, and they 
you know, there was just there's a tendency that for there to be a cycle, and in the end, it all works out. But but the numbers that you saw at JFK would have been calendar year numbers. I mean, would have been fiscal year numbers. So that there's not necessarily a direct link. That's actually, no, that is new structures. That's new buildings new on buildings. the ground. That doesn't count additions or major renovations. That sets all that aside. Um, that, that, yeah. that's, that's literally new, new footprint. And the other is 46.8, <coughs> almost 46.9. That's are, total, includes includes sheds, all of it. That's everything, sheds, renovations, and new. And new. Of the new single family dwellings, how many weren't either on Emerson Way or at the State Hospital? Um, I did bring this, I did bring a breakdown, it'll take me a minute, but... I'm just saying it couldn't be too many. Not a lot. Well, it's surprising this, we are pick, pick away at infill stuff. There's, there were a couple on Spring Street, there's, I think one on uh, uh, Oak Street. Um, it's surprising how much infill there is. Um, there were some on Mark Warner. Um, mm -hmm. There was one on, looks like only one on Evergreen, one on Dunphy Drive, um, another one on Evergreen. 27 Fort Street was a tear down and rebuild. Um, 22 Nutting Avenue, um, new construction. Um, 121 Oak Street, 196 Glendale, 46 Upland. 23 Fair Street is is in process. It's not <coughs> not underway yet. And three Garfield. So you know the majority of it was was uh, uh, Village Hill and uh, and Emerson Way and uh, the uh, development on on uh, Evergreen, which I think is called Beaverbrook Estates. Yeah, Chestnut Ave. Chestnut Ave extension. Commercial stuff running now because it wasn't too bad to us lately. We've got the King Street stuff, the, mm -hmm. the demolition and the, the, the car dealer. Two, and two banks and three car dealerships. Yeah, those, those two, right. um, And we don't have the permit. The permits for the two dealerships aren't, aren't in yet. Yeah. Because they're doing a, Lee's doing one. And Col uh, Colvet, I mean, uh, oh, Kazenzi, Kazenzi's are doing two. They're doing two okay. on that one. So the ones that are working are the, Lita has one, Colvest is still going, and Kazenzi has two. But they haven't done the construction ones yet. Right. Just we haven't seen the, we've just seen the, the special permit, the site plan approvals. We haven't seen the actual permit applications yet. And, uh, I just did uh, talk to the people from Zoe Life, <coughs> Zoe Life Center, which is the, the, the new building at Linda Manor, and they're, I think, going forward with that. They got put on hold last summer, but I think it's going to start, I think they're going to start soon. Um, the, uh, the assisted living facility at Village Hill, I think, is going to go forward, um, which is another, I think, 80 units. In between the, uh, the male attendance building and the Haskell building, I don't know if you're familiar with that project. So, I mean, I think Northampton is, and talking to the other uh, commissioners in the area, I think Northampton is, is pretty strong right now, surprisingly strong. 
What? Not, not that it directly involves you, but what's happening to the bus stop in front of the building that Jonathan's putting up for the, the new commercial building? I don't know. Because if we got a grant to fix it, and I noticed it's most of it's missing now. <laughs> um, did that? Do anything with that one? I guess I should ask the planners, since they're the ones that got the grant to fix it. But you know which one I'm talking about? The bus stop right at the top of Village Hill? Oh, I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're building. Uh, I did see, I saw something, and I honestly don't remember. It's going to end up being some, I shouldn't say. I saw something about it. People didn't forget about it. Okay, because I just noticed most of us, the pillars are there, but the rest of it's gone. And I just wondered, since we got a grant to restore it, what, what is future held? Or whether somebody just backed through it with a front loader. <laughs> I'll ask the planners. I'm sure they they know all about that. Well, that's one of the sorts of things that would be part of the um, the special permit or site plan review conditions, and um, it's usually broken down into before we issue the building permit and then before we issue the certificate of occupancy. And I know it wasn't part of the before we issue the building permit, so I'm assuming that if it's a condition of of them having to deal with it, it'll be done before the building is occupied. Yeah, because it's really close. I'm surprised how close it is. I think. Uh, thank you for your uh, for this report. Uh, I have a question. Is uh, you know you, you stand in front of us maybe once a year, twice a year, and um, maybe you you have you could take this opportunity if you felt so inclined to tell us about what's been, what particular part of the code has been giving you any headaches recently? Anything that, that legislation can fix or simplify, clarify, or, uh, or, 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 or help in any way? I'm, I'm curious because I know, for instance, when it, you know, there's a special permit granted for Island Road and regarding, you know, soccer playing and, and, and uh, carpooling and nightmare to try to enforce. I'm, I'm wondering if your office has had any difficult situations in the last year that uh, any legislation could, could simplify. And you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing, nothing comes immediately to mind. There's, there's complicated aspects of of the zoning ordinance, there's complicated aspects of the building code, and um, we work with them. The uh, and uh, as as far as the zoning ordinances are concerned, there's a feedback loop between myself and the planning department. Um, I meet with somebody from the, with Carolyn Mission, the senior planner, every Thursday, and there is a loop of feedback. And as uh, I think that. Um, it's mostly been around, you know, specific wording um, where something might be ambiguous, and that um, I've had good luck with giving her feedback and having it go back and then get get into the ordinance review and, and ordinance changes. And as far as the building code is concerned, there's a feedback to the folks in Boston, and uh, um, it's that's a that's way more complicated and and. Uh, I think more difficult to move, um, but there is a process and it does seem to be working um, to some degree or another. I've made some suggestions to um, some of the Board of Building Regulations staff and, and had them come through in code changes. How, how are we doing with the topic of last year, the chickens? Chickens been under control since we modified our ordinance. We haven't had any more chicken trouble. Uh, we, we do. Uh, we probably deal with you know six or eight uh, enforcement acts, actions against chicken owners a year, um, and it hasn't been worse with the greater number. The greater number of chickens hasn't made it worse, um, but we still we call them chicken letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's usually just a letter. We have hasn't. Gotten, you know, we haven't run into the kind of resistance that 
I was a little concerned about, but uh, people seem uh, amenable to um, keeping their chickens quiet. The people that have called me about it usually, nature is taking its course. If the chickens are free range, something eats the excess chickens soon enough, and then they're back within their quota before anybody. Before the chicken letter gets there, something's usually eating the extra chickens. So. The, uh, we had a, we did an enforcement action a number of years ago, um, and and uh, a neighbor complained that that a person complained that the neighbor's ducks were chasing their dog around, and I issued an order that they had to keep their ducks under control. Or just tell the neighbor to get a bigger dog, <laughs> <laughs> and then nature will again take its course. You know, it's qual those are quality of life issues to me, and and it seems like it's pretty it's it it's it's not sometimes uh, it seems like a little thing but we we do that sort of uh, we respond to those sorts of complaints because I think it makes people's lives a little better and it, it makes the city feel responsive I mean, it is one of the ordinances um, as as silly as it might seem at some point I think it goes a long ways towards um, making feel people feel like they're being listened to I know an ordinance we spent quite a bit of time on so there was, and the room was full, so people were interested in chicken. And it's just not related to this so much, but did your vehicle, your vehicle made it through? We did, we did get the, uh, we did get the uh, authorization to purchase. I'm negotiating with, uh, to try to get the best vehicle we can with the money we've got. Um, one question that I, one thing I'm wondering about is how much of a, could we, could, the city would the city be interested in allowing some small portion of the rear of the car for like a little bit bigger name of the uh, dealer that provided the car in exchange for uh, you know a significant discount? I'm thinking about a four inch by thirty six inch panel, say along the back bottom of the trunk lid with the dealer's name instead of just a little script in which they're going to. Sounds like a joke book question to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I personally do not care if it's cheaper yeah. for the city. It's I mean, there's a history of it. Um, I know that, that some of the older parking vehicles used to say courtesy of or provided by. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd go that far, but just a little bit bigger um, label. And I did talk to Joe, and I think I'm going to uh, finish running it through the mayor's office. And, Remind them though that you do enforcement actions, so not everybody that sees you leaving is happy that you were there. No, I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe no. the dealer wants to think yeah. about that. <laughs> we're just going to go for the how much can we get for how many square inches can we get? Yeah. I, I know nobody wants uh, placards on police cars. That usually doesn't work out either. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I, uh, I don't care. I don't. I don't think anyone. I think I, don't care. I care more about the bottom line than. Well, I think there's, it's a continuum, you know, and how do you find the, I'm sure that there's probably dealerships that would give us, give us a vehicle as long as, you know, as long as it said Northampton Building Department in very small letters across the bottom, and that it was wrapped in a, a, you, know, a you know, a complete advertisement. I mean, can we find something in the middle that doesn't uh, sort of get out of hand? And that's that's where it went first. Oh, I'm glad you got to go. I did it great. Is there anything else for Mr. Hasbro? Thank you, Mr. Hasbro. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we're getting to the discussion with Fire Chief Duggan and the neighborhood watch signs issue. And first of all, Chief, I want to thank you for being here outside of the quarter week meeting. And um, I know it's an extra meeting for you. Um, and I know the gentleman who, who, is, who I've spoken to and who requested this discussion be put on is not here. So uh, if you want to, I, I, can, I you can just you, you, can, you can share the information you have, or I can just direct him to you unless there's anything else the counselors 
want to ask you, I mean, this, this really was specifically to accommodate Mr. Sadlowski, and he's okay. not here. So I won't ask you back for this topic. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you can either, I'll, I'll leave it up to you if you want to take off or present something to okay. us. Would it be okay with you if you contact me by putting in contact with you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to have a discussion with anyone. Well, let, listen, can I just, can I just say um, <coughs> before the chief, please, but as a moment to, I can take the time if someone's walking in. Um, I, uh, I've spoken to uh, Chief Duggan about, about you know, parking at the end of Barrett Place. And uh, actually, he today sent a, a memorandum uh, to, to me uh, that will be taken up at the Transportation Parking Commission regarding parking. I don't know if, if uh, the, my fellow counselors know about the about Barrett Place, how it almost meets Henshaw Avenue, but doesn't. Um, yeah, if you have a bicycle, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, a mountain bike. It's, it's it's it has allowed. So so there's um, you can't park overnight. You can't park on one side of the street, and then overnight parking is not allowed. Uh, at, at at the end of the street. But um, when Shaped the sign that would uh, show no parking was taken out and was never returned. So there's no notice regarding the, the ordinance for no parking at uh, overnight. And um, at this point, there's a sort of makeshift parking lot at the end of the, at the, the dead end portion of the street where cars park on the side of the road, in the middle of the road, and on the other side of the because it's the end, it's a dead end street. The, the, the cars parked in the middle of the road don't really stop any traffic because it's a dead end. And um, uh, Chief Duggan, um, in his memorandum, uh, said that uh, he believes that uh, parking at the end of the street is a public safety uh, hazard, and um, and would support no parking at the end of the street at all times. And I think that's. Uh, I think that I really I thank you, Chief, for your for your um, putting yeah. that in writing, and uh, we'll be considering that at the next transportation is it, parking. Commission. Is it resident parking or just a good place for the students to leave their cars? They, um, they're really good at finding any nook or cranny where they can jam a car. I think it's I think um, it's it's a combination of overflow parking for residents and resident guests and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't believe that this. Are, uh, it's just a, a very tight street that winds. So years ago, and I hate to be involved in parking issues because we, we are the police department, but since we have the larger vehicles, it tends to be that we get brought into these. Um, years ago, the lens we used was, could a vehicle get in? We'll worry about getting it out later, but as long as we can get to the fire. Now, with a broader scope of services, with emergency medical services, what is more likely to happen is an ambulance would respond to a medical emergency and basically be stuck there um, if there was parking. Because I actually went, met Councilor Spector there, had to do a three-point turn myself with no cars parked there to just get out. So if you introduced any vehicle in, an ambulance is not going to be able to maneuver out, which means they need to back down a narrow winding street to then try and get out onto the, the main street. So. And the end of that street is parked up as well. Right. Because uh, on that portion of, I think that's Prospects, Prospects there. Yeah. yeah. They park right up to the end of that. I mean, yeah. They shoot one of the cars in on that part of Prospects. Right. Too, so. So, so that was the basis for my decision. I provided the memo and, and happy to do so. Um, relative to neighborhood watch signs, I'm, I'm not sort of the expert on neighborhood watch other than police, fire, and the sheriffs came together. Usually in many communities it's police and sometimes the sheriffs that will bring that forward. Um, here specifically after the arson fires there was an initiative brought forward, I think Councilor Labarge had a lot to do with it, where we co-hosted a number of trainings. And I don't think there's a requirement for the signs, it's sort of by agreement of the, the neighborhood. Um, but that's not my real area of expertise, although I'd be happy to talk to any citizen. Yeah, because wasn't that 
Bernie was really involved in that, and the Work Free Association. I mean, I thought they were really loving those signs. I, yeah, I don't see, I honestly don't think that the, you didn't have anything to do with putting those signs up there, right? Chief Max? So I'm not sure why you need to, to talk to and someone around those signs being put up since right. you weren't involved with those signs. Right. Because the association had a lot to do with those, didn't it? Well, at the in Ward, at the Ward three level, actually, it was the Rotarians who gave the signs, who who uh, gave the, the signs, signs. And, the, the, and had the, the existing post permits. So they put their signs on. Mm -hmm. They put those signs on to the, the Ward three. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I have seen more of the similar sign, which is the newer, um, which is the the, <coughs> the newer neighborhood watch sign, not the I, but the uh, the burglar. I can't the remember the name yeah. with the, yeah. the, the Bob the Burglar or whatever. Um, and it, from what I can tell, it's it's uh, it's a neighborhood arrangement with the police or the or the sheriff's office. But not I haven't seen the fire department really involved mm -hmm. in it very yeah. much. The last I heard of it was when somebody had the bright idea they should put counselors' phone numbers on there, yeah. uh, rather than you know it's like. How about 911? Does that work? You know, call like the police. Go <laughs> call the cops. In, in other communities, the, the argument I'm more familiar with is why neighborhood watch signs aren't being put up as it was perceived as a crime deterrent. Um, so, but again, out of my yeah, I was surprised to see it. When you did. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Sedlowski. Well, I think we've addressed the parking issue to the best of my ability, and um, you know, any questions you have, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Have a good night. Thank you. Is there any new business? Oh, they really, I understood they really wanted them when, when the Rotary 